This is episode 195 of the Sales Development Podcast, powered by Tenbound, hosted by David Delaney. My name is James Bodden, here to introduce our fantastic guest, Appy Chowdhury, head of sales development at Blend. We kick off the episode and Appy shares how he got into sales development and started leading the team over at Blend. And then David and Appy talk about the nuts and bolts of building a pipeline generating machine via sales development activity. Any revenue leader tasked with generating top of funnel activity needs to listen to this. At the 15 minute mark, they go over how he recruits for his team and the collaboration required with his talent acquisition teammates to really keep his candidate pipeline strong. David then goes on to ask Appy about the difference between building a team from scratch, which he's done, versus an already built team, which is something he's also experienced. This is really valuable information for all of the SDR leaders out there who maybe have just gotten into a role where they're leading a team, an existing team for the first time. The episode wraps up and Appy gives great insight on how he manages his direct reports as well as his relationships with his executive team as the head of sales development. This episode is a dynamite, value-packed episode for all of the sales development leaders out there. Appy Chaudhry is a consummate professional, somebody that is at the forefront of what it means to be a fantastic sales development leader. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to give us a rating. Head over to tenbound.com. And for now, enjoy episode 195 of the Sales Development Podcast featuring Appy Chaudhry, head of sales development at Blend. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Sales Development Podcast. I am honored to be joined by the next guest, Mr. Appy Jodri, Head of Sales Development at Blend. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing great. Things are awesome. Enjoying the warm summer of the Bay Area and looking forward to this podcast, David. I love it. I love it. And first, I want to thank you. You know, you've been a huge supporter of the podcast and the Tenbound community and, you know, contributing to the knowledge base, you know, for the sales development community. So first and foremost, thank you for all the support and thank you for coming on. I want to know, how did you get into sales development and then come to run the team over at Blend? That's an interesting question. Before that, you know, I've been a fan of Tenbound. In fact, my previous two gigs, I've made sure that my SDRs definitely go through the training Tenbound provides. So thanks for your support over there. I love the program you've created and will continue to send more folks as I see there's a need. So thanks for that, David. And now to answer your question, back in the day when, you know, sales day was just about to begin in startups, not about bigger organizations, I could see that there's going to be a big need in the next five to 10 years and it's going to become a very important function. And there's not going to be one sales rep who's going to do the entire sales process. It's going to be divided between, you know, pipeline generation, top of the funnel, mid funnel, and then how to keep the customers happy. So thinking about this more often, I did feel that for startups, the most important thing as they go from series A to series B, series B to series C, the most important thing is definitely revenue. But for the sales leader, for their usual VP sales, it's about how are we going to generate this pipeline? That's the question I've heard from most sales leaders when they are in this bucket of series B, series companies. And that's what got me into sales development, that I'd like to become a machine of hiring, training, generating millions of dollars of pipeline, and then moving on. That was my motivation. And that's how I got into sales development. And now, how did I come across Blend? It's Bay Area. A recruiter reached out from Blend. Back then, Blend was a Series E company, almost 400 employees. They were looking for an SDR leader. I personally was not looking out for a role because I was doing great at LaunchDarkly, my previous company. 
but then based on the conversations i had with my hiring manager and based on all the people i spoke with during the interview process it just made sense and that's how i made the move and now i've been here for a year and a half now and it's going gangbusters and so i want to talk about how you built the team at launch darkly and then how you took over a team at blend but before i start the pipeline generation machine i think that would be music to the ears of any executive right <laughs> at, at these companies so tell me about that how do you start a pipeline generation machine through sales development at a company i think it starts this is a very interesting function that usually sits between sales and between marketing i've been in both cases where i've reported into sales i've reported into marketing i've switched teams over and to specifically answer your question it basically starts from inbound and outbound right so marketing teams at early stage startups they are doing everything to build their brand and start focusing on inbound leads and then when we start developing pipeline generation there's already some existing inbound so well qualifying those inbounds navigating through those inbounds and making sure that we're giving them a good experience and actually closing those deals that's what happens on the inbound side and most importantly it's outbound which is a huge challenge for a lot of companies and that's what takes companies from a series b to a series e and basically creating a playbook over there where what kind of outreach should be done what's our icp ideal customer persona what's our tam total addressable market and then bringing on the right tools such as an outreach or a sales loft a zoom in for lead iq linkedin sales navigator and starting to find the right contacts and then starting a very effective outreach to those contacts getting meetings with the right prospects working it in tandem with your account executives and then taking it from there so that's how it all starts and now happy to deep dive into you know your question around how i built that team at launch darkly and how are things at blend yeah exactly so you know one thing that pops up a lot is different industry so you've got your pipeline generation machine you know the framework in your head but then you go from industry to industry and you've got to apply that so at launch darkly it was in the security industry right so when you came in and started to build your machine where did you start and you know how did that process get put in place so to clarify more on launch darkly it was a devops tool and we were selling to engineering leaders and it was a huge tam and by that i mean we could sell to a 20 people startup or we could sell to a company which has more than 20000 employees so initially it was basically understanding who do we want to target what are the titles and roles and responsibilities of folks we want to target what are the pain points they are facing right now and how can we show that this tool can solve their pain points how did we start doing that is basically we brought on a tool called apollo.io back in the day started creating some effective outreach for these specific persona types and this outreach included emails phone calls social touches including linkedin and then started building on those touches at the same time i hired a couple of sdrs and continued to revamp the playbook started learning on what are the open rates we are seeing of our emails what are the connect rates we are seeing through phone calls and then using all of that to make the playbook better and better using a data driven approach and then just kept on growing with all of that information expanding the team further and in a span of two years we had a team of almost 20 sdrs three team leads slash managers and it was a great journey amazing and so let's talk about the people so i know and we were just talking about this before <laughs> you know having the right people on the team now that you've got your process in place how do you think about you know the hiring process and recruiting 
Yeah, at this point of time in the last five, six years, I must have hired somewhere around 60 to 70 SDRs. So, you know, it's easy for me to understand what gets to become a top 5% SDR or an SDR who's hitting their quotas or an SDR who's going to miss their quotas. But in general, few things I really look at and what's important in this role is someone who's coachable. You know, this is a stepping stone kind of role for anyone who wants to, you know, join the tech sales industry. So you need to be coachable. You're here to learn, digest all the information you're getting from everyone who's around you. The second thing I would say is you need to be super organized to be successful in this role. And the reason behind that is you're dealing with so much at the same time. You're dealing with hundreds of leads. You're dealing with hundreds of emails in your inbox. You're dealing with your multiple account executives. You're dealing with all the different Google Sheets. And you also need to be on top of your Slack. <laughs> so because you need to be on top of so many things, you need to be super organized, set reminders, be on top of your tasks. And in general, be on top of the game if you want to make sure that you're being successful. So that's the second trade. The third thing I would say is basically someone who's actually curious and creative. And why that's important is in an SDR role, it's a lot about what kind of conversations you're having with prospects. Are you genuinely curious in understanding what problem, what challenges or how's their process, or you're just asking them to take some notes. So if an SDR is generally curious, they really want to know what their prospect does. How are they successful? What pain points and challenges they're facing? That needs to come genuinely. And then to have a great conversation, if an SDR is creative, they can navigate and share different ways on pitching the product. And that's also only possible if they're creative, otherwise it's gonna become very difficult for them. So I would say these are the top four characteristics when I try to hire SDRs. Other than that, definitely I do have a list of 11 skills, which includes consistency, consistency, hardworking, having a data-driven approach, self-driven and self-motivated, but yeah, these are the skills I look for when I'm hiring SDRs and trying to hire the right or the best talent. As you're putting the program together, you have a lot of control over the type of team that you put out on the field. How, so two questions. How do you go about finding these people? Because it seems like it's very critical that you get the right people on your team, but it's a competitive you know, position, there's a lot of people looking, you have to do a lot of interviewing. How do you find people to be able to, you know, fit in the team culture that you're putting together? That's a great question. And there are multiple ways of finding the right people, David, and it depends on the expectations. I've been at a certain point of time where I did not have a lot of urgent pipeline building emergency. And that's when I could afford to hire someone straight out of college and train them for three months and wait for results. And I've also been on the other side where I need pipeline from day one. And that's why I'm trying to hire an SDR who already has a year or two of SDR experience and they can start from day one. So, very different angles of looking at it. Now, if I'm trying to hire, you know, if there's not a lot of urgency of building pipeline, it could be hiring directly from college, from universities. That's for early stage folks. The second, you know, there have these great boot camps come up in the recent times. I'll call out a few names. There's FlogJ, SV Academy, Vendition. And these players, they train folks to become SDRs. A lot of them do a great job. So hiring directly from them saves that month or two 
from the onboarding and ramping up period. So that's the second bucket. And then the third bucket is definitely reaching out to folks who already have SDR experience and sharing them that why this is the right company for you. There is definitely a lot of growth at this company. And I shared Blend is a great example over here. We've grown tremendously in the last six to 12 months. And that could be an exciting factor for SDRs who have a year or two year experience as an SDR, but have been unable to grow in an account executive role, or as a matter of fact, in any role they really want to get into. Got it. And so you do a little bit of recruiting yourself. And do you get support from you know, a recruiting team or is it mainly you yourself making some time every day to start looking through and contacting people? At both my previous companies, I had a recruiter who was taking care of inbound SDR candidate leads as well as doing outbound for me because I had to hire a lot. So it's been a while since I myself outbounded for SDR candidates. I've asked my recruiters to use my accounts and my name to do outbounding. But yeah, it's been a while since I myself reached out to SDR candidates on LinkedIn. Got it. Okay. So, and you've got a very clear picture of who would be successful on the team and who you want to bring in. Now, the flip side of that is you move to a new program and there's already a group of people, you know, running and now you're the new manager. So you can't start from scratch with your program. You have to, you know, graft it onto what's happening already. Where do you start in that situation? And how do you go about, you know, getting the ship, you know, on track or whatever it's called? (laughs) I think over here, the most interesting piece was to understand the existing culture of the team I took over their motivation level, what challenges they are facing, and where is an opportunity of growth for every individual on this new team I took over, right? So that's what I did for the initial first month. I spent quite some time with all the reps understanding how are things going on right now? Where do they see a challenge? Where are they struggling? Understanding what are their strengths and where's a growth of opportunity and understanding the dynamics within the team. After doing that, I got into the rhythm. I started sharing my thoughts with them. I got their buy-in and that helped change the motivation level of the team. And how do you think about the talent aspect when you're coming into a new team? Is there some kind of assessment or, you know, a way to understand who am I working with here? Or do you just kind of give it some time to play out according to, you know, the expectations that you have? It's basically definitely understanding the expectations. And it's also about managing up. And by that, I mean, understanding the expectations on what do they want from me and my team. And then hearing from the team, on what do they want and also sharing with them and setting expectations in front of them that, okay, this is what you got and this is what I need from you. I think in this role, it's very important to set clear expectations, whether it's from the numbers perspective or whether it's from the cultural perspective, because oftentimes these are folks who are, you know, early in their career, and want that level of mentorship and guidance from their leaders. How do you think about the training and the coaching for the team? Great tools have come up to support training and coaching. For example, when I joined Blend, I felt that there's a need for the team to do some call coaching. And back then we didn't have a gong. And my first decision was to send my team to you at 10 bound to do a cold calling session. That was really helpful. Later on, we onboarded Gong, which started helping me in coaching my reps, giving them feedback, showing them some data around what's the right way of doing things, qualifying questions, how to respond when pricing comes up, how to respond when a competitor name comes up. 
So Gong was helpful in that. We even started using the scorecard functionality. So that helped in overall call coaching. And I also think it depends on what industry you're working in. And for an example, at Launch Dark Leap, we were going after engineering leaders, IT leaders. And that was more of an email heavy game where we were not getting a lot of connects on the phone. Engineering leaders didn't really talk on the phone. They would prefer an email or LinkedIn outreach. Compared to right now, we sell into financial institutions. And most of our prospects over here prefer the phone approach and not the LinkedIn or email approach. So it also depends on that. I'm wondering about that too. With coaching, if it's more of a written communication with mostly emails and social, how do you work with the SDRs You know, versus when they're on the phone, you can do call coaching and review their conversations. But when it comes to the written word, how do you help them to improve? There are multiple ways and I've tried them. The first is definitely a manual way of looking at their outreach or looking at their emails that are getting opened and giving them direct feedback on their emails, though that's super manual. There are other tools. And as an example, outreach came up with their own free website called Cold Email Grader. And what you need to do is basically just enter the subject line and enter the email content and it'll grade your email and it'll show you why and how it graded it. So I used that for a couple of months and I even ran a spiff around it that every SDR needs to support one email per week to me. And then whichever email gets the highest score on this tool will win this week's spiff. So that also helped me coach them on their personalized emails. I love that. And so that's always a challenge because you know, emails are going back and forth all day, right? And you don't know, if, if, are we improving? Are they getting better, etc. How do you, you know, do the performance management process for the team? So making sure that everyone's on track and they're hitting their KPIs. And, you know, if someone's really struggling, how do you deal with that? I think about performance in two Streams. The first is definitely their quotas. Are they hitting their numbers? And their numbers could be whether it's daily metrics or whether it's a quarterly opportunity number they need to generate. And the other piece is what culture they bring on to the team or what culture do they bring on to the folks they meet with. So this is how I categorize their performance. And now to answer your question, Supporting them, helping them on how their numbers are looking like. If they are struggling on converting calls to connects, if they are struggling on converting connects to closed meetings, at the same time, if they are not getting high open rates, if they are not getting high reply rates, then working with them and helping them improve all of this is definitely going to help them achieve their numbers. It also depends on what kind of product we're selling, who are we reaching out to, what time of the day, what month of the year. So taking all of this into consideration and coaching them for so that they can hit their number. That's on the performance side of things. On the culture side of things, things have gone remote. It's been a year and a half, but what culture do they bring to the team? Whenever the team wants to try something new, Are they supportive or are they pulling the team back? Do they want to try creative things? How's their work with their account executives? What feedback am I hearing about them from the extended sales org or marketing org? These are a few of the important things I consider when doing performance evaluation. Got it. And so as you build up your organization, do you also work with managers? So you're kind of managing managers or are you going directly to the individuals, you know, with your coaching? It's both ways, you know, at a certain point of time, I think skip levels also become important. And 
I've managed managers in my current role also I do that so I usually try to do a skip level once a quarter for new SDRs it's usually once a month most of the coaching I want for those SDRs should directly come from their manager and by that I mean I'd expect their manager to coach them on a day to day basis having a very tactical approach compared to my work with them is going to basically show them the vision of the team show them the values this thing, team brings and how important their role is so understanding their motivation level and then motivating them to go above and beyond that's how my role is currently spaced out with direct strs and then a lot of my efforts are also put in encouraging and enabling my managers so that they can support their strs and so how do you work on the flip side of that with the more senior executives and when they're giving you the goals they're giving you the objectives and then you have to execute on those what is that communication flow look like managing up is always interesting mm-hmm. <laughs> because we are in sales i mean it's pretty obvious that we need to take a data driven approach and basically look into how much pipeline we need to generate how much of this is going to come from inbound how much of this is going to come from outbound and then hire reps accordingly and then also work closely with the sales leaders on the quality of the pipeline conversion rates from let's say a meeting to an opportunity or an opportunity to a close so using all of these tactics i you know work with the executives and get their buy in get confirmation from them on what numbers we need to close and then share that with the rest of the team at an individual level got it wow i mean they would be lucky to have you on the team right <laughs> because you know what you're doing so what are you working on now and what's next for your career plan and the program that you're leading so that's an interesting question where i am right now it's almost end of q3 we're getting into q4 q4 generally is not a great pipeline quarter so i am basically focused on creating a plan for 2022 what new roles i want to open on my team and by that i don't mean just st how many more str open headcount i need but it's more around what more roles and responsibilities i can add on to the str bucket this team brings great skill set on to the table whether it's writing super personalized emails whether it's researching the hell out of prospects whether it's making cold or warm calls i think very rare we get this skill set in companies so i'm thinking how can we use this skill set more to create more of an impact at blend we're thinking about more data oriented roles on my team i'm thinking about more on the customer success side that how can strs support and help usage adoption of our tool how can they help in cross sell opportunities how can they help in onboarding customers basically my vision for the next one or two years that's what i'm currently working on at blend there's so many you know strategic initiatives right there that you could be you're going to be really busy the next couple of years yes sounds like i mean it's an exciting team we're doing great as a company there's a ton of opportunity so i'm excited there's a lot to be done and i'm glad that i have such a team i'm glad i have such support from my leaders and yeah looking forward to 2022 it's going to be an exciting year overall well i could tell you if there's any sdrs listening or managers you heard it here first a <laughs> great <laughs> amazing leader and appy and you know i just want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing your wisdom and knowledge with the community if people are interested and i mean i'm going to go and apply after this if they want to get involved <laughs> with what you're doing what's the best way to connect with you and keep the conversation going linkedin is the best way to connect with me and then it's my email appy@blend.com 
I am definitely looking for more SDRs as <laughs> always. So if you're an SDR, please reach out. I am probably also going to look for more leaders in the next few months. So keep you posted on that, but would love to build relationships and connect with SDRs or SDR leaders and work on strategizing within these great ideas. I love it. Well, Appy, thank you so much for coming on the show and we look forward. We'll get you back on to get an update on the progress later in the year. Of course, David, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure and we'll keep in touch. Thank you for listening to the Sales Development Podcast, the only audio forum 100% focused and dedicated to sales development with your host, David Delaney. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube and take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes. Your support makes our show possible. If you are struggling with your sales development program, contact us at 10bound.com for a no-obligation exploratory call. Again, that's 10bound.com.